It's Tuesday, night three. Are you guys ready for what the Holy Ghost is about to do in this room? Okay. Yeah, that's okay. 18 of you just now. That was pretty good. Are you guys really ready for what the Holy Spirit is about to do tonight? Let me ask you this. How many have come expecting for the Holy Spirit to do something tonight? Yeah. So, this is what we're going to do. We're going to praise Him for a minute. We're going to welcome Him into the room. And when He walks into the room, guess what? He's going to do something. So, T.D. Jake said it best when he said, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. All right? Look at somebody beside you saying, get ready. Find somebody else saying, get ready. Find somebody else saying, get ready. Find somebody else saying, get ready. Okay, now look. If you're sitting in the very back, I've got bad news for you. The Holy Spirit stops like five rows before the back wall. I was instructed to tell you that tonight. He, he doesn't go past the pillars. So if you're past, you got to get in front of the pillars. If you're around to see the Holy Spirit do something in your life. Come on, you guys can move up to the front. We are going to be the family of the Lord tonight and just honor and magnify his name. So for 30 seconds, come on, lift up a shout. Come on, welcome him into the room tonight. Come on, if you're thankful for what he's about to do tonight, come on. If you're ready for what he's about to do tonight, come on, somebody. Magnify his name. Come on. Come on, magnify his name tonight. Come on, 
side is having a good time. I'm not saying the right side is not having a good time. The left side seems to be having a better time. So, we gotta make it even. How many are really thankful for what the Lord has done in your life? See? I know you guys are thankful. So we're gonna give you just a minute more to make sure that you can tell the Lord that you are thankful. Does that sound like a plan? So we're gonna testify just a little while longer about the fact that hell has lost another one because I'm free. And we're singing that over our lives tonight. We're singing that out into the atmosphere and we're definitely telling the enemy, guess what? You done lost another one. So it's a good time to rejoice. It's a good time to smile. It's a good time to dance before the Lord, amen? Are you guys ready for real? I'm trying to help the right side. I'm trying to help you. Pastor Nelly and I are on the right side. We'll help out a little bit here, all right? All right, let's declare it. Hell lost another one. Come on, let's say, hell lost another one. I am. Come on.
Come on, church. He loves the praises of his people. It is the place where he rests. So let's give him a place to come and rest tonight. Come on. Oh, magnify the name of Jesus. Magnify the name of our king tonight. He is high and lifted up. He is exalted in this room tonight. Above all things. Above all things. Above all things. Yes, he is. Oh, he is worthy to be worshipped. Worthy to be magnified. Yes, he is. Oh, we worship. We worship. We worship. We worship you. Yes. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you. We worship you, we worship you. We worship you tonight. We worship you tonight. We worship you tonight. Yeah. Above all things, above all things, there is nothing that can stand against you. There's nothing that can stand against you. Nothing can stand against you. We declare tonight in the midst of our thankfulness that you are more than able to accomplish everything that you want to do. Let faith arise in this room tonight, not for our sake, but because we want to honor our King because nothing, nothing is impossible for you. Nothing is impossible for you, Jesus. Oh, nothing, Jesus. Oh, we worship, we worship. When did I start? to forget all of the great things you did when did I throw away faith for the impossible and how did I start to believe that you weren't sufficient for me why do I talk myself
This is his anthem tonight. So we sing it out to him. Say, way make. Just one more time. We make miracle work. Right now, uh, 15 or 20 of the most passionate young people to come join me right here on the stage. I'll take the first 15 or 20 that are passionate about Jesus. Yeah, yeah, good for you, bro. Come on, come on, come on. I need a few more. Need a few more. A few more. I'll take these. They're the last two coming right here. Just in love with Jesus. Wow. Man. I, I... Well, don't trap me. Come on, give me a little bit of room. Come on, guys. Jeepers. Um, I just spoke this over Natalie, and I got a sense this is for the whole house. You guys are not, especially you young people, are not thermometers. You're thermostats. Are you picking up what I'm laying down? Come on, are you smelling what I'm stepping in tonight? There's a lot of people, they think their spiritual gift is just to figure out what's going on and what the temperature is, and, and that's good. We need a few thermometers. But how many of you know we need some thermostats that are actually going to change the atmosphere? My life is not governed by godless governmental policy. I am not restricted by current costs relative to my current salary. In Jesus' name, I'm not in a box because I'm not a thermometer. In Jesus' name, I'm a thermostat. How many of you want to join me in that tonight? I've invited these students onto the platform with me because tonight we're going to do a prophetic act. And I'm going to ask these guys to lead you in it. In just a moment, we're going to sing Waymaker just once more through the course, just once more the first time. And there is a verse, actually three or four verses at the end of Psalm chapter 24. Yes, Lord. (laughs) Where the psalmist speaks to the the physical realm and commands it to make room for God. And he he says these words. He says, Swing wide, you ancient gates. Be lifted up, you everlasting doors, so that the King of glory may come in. Who is he? this King of glory, the Lord Almighty. He is the King of glory. And as a prophetic act, I'm gonna ask you young people without punching each other to swing wide some ancient gates, to lift up some everlasting doors and declare out loud, King of glory, come on in. Are you ready to do this? Are you ready to do this? Follow my lead. Get your gates ready. Get your gates ready. Are you ready? Swing wide, you everlasting gates. Be lifted up, you everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. Come on, shout it out. King of glory. King of glory. Come on in. Come on. Oh, my God, that's powerful. That's powerful. There's something happens when we offer a prophetic act. We're saying we agree with the word of the Lord. 
We agree with what he is saying. We agree with the psalmist, and we just release it into the atmosphere that the king of glory may come in. I'm going to ask the rest of you to join us. They're going to do it again. You're going to do it with me this time. Are you ready? You ready? Get your gates ready. Well, this isn't Sunday school. These are Holy Spirit days. If you're a little uncomfortable doing this, come on. Let some faith. Come on, somebody risk an arm movement in Jesus' name. Somebody take a radical, crazy step of faith and loose your arms tonight. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? Swing wide, you ancient gates. Be lifted up, you everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. Woo! 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 My God, there's something so powerful happens when we're in agreement and we're all just a little bit crazy in the head to do the swing wide thing. What a beautiful expression of faith. Can I tell you right now, your heavenly father is giggling with delight. And I'm going to ask you to do one more thing. This is why I want you young people here. Is I just feel we need to declare over Brian and Rachel. Are you ready for this, young people? Are you with me on this? I'm going to face you to lead you. But I'm going to ask you as a prophetic act to speak to the doors that are in front of them because God is opening something for them these days that is so powerful. I've never been so convinced in my whole life. And so we decree over you guys in front of you. Are you gonna leave me hanging here, guys? Come on, am I doing this by myself? Are you guys awake? Are you guys okay? I asked for cutting edge students up here with me, not those in a coma in Jesus' name. You ready? You guys ready? Get your gates ready. We speak to these doors in front of you and we say, swing wide, you ancient gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, that the king of glory may come in. And in Jesus' name, we decree and we agree for open doors that no man can shut, that he would close doors that no man could open, that you guys would walk in a new liberty, in a fresh touch, new season, fullness of the five-fold anointing. No more one-fold, no more one gift. In Jesus' name, the fullness of what's on your lives. God is going to release, God is gonna position, and God is gonna place, and no man, no man, no government, no location, can stand against what God himself will establish in Jesus' name. And all the people of God said, come on, woo! Come on, sing it again, Waymaker. Thanks, guys, thanks, guys. I gotta, I gotta say, Pastor Mark, I think that's the first time that's happened here. I think, yes, yeah, swinging and lifting and yelling and whole lot of shaking. Absolutely. Whew, God's good. God's good. Hey, uh, take a seat. Take a seat. I'm gonna take a seat. Oh. I had this thought just before I. Uh, bring uh, 
worship team, come on. Can we say thank you to the, the worship team? Yeah. Um, I know somebody is going to tell me, Danny, why don't you try to hire Brian and Rachel in any position in this church? And I got to tell you, I've told them, I'll, I'll hire him in any position in this church. He shot me down like 10 times. It's uh, what a gift they are. What an absolute gift they are. And Pastor Gary and Jan, we honor you tonight. Um, just again, I mean, you kind of had something to do with that. So <laughs> uh, my wife can attest that the last three or four days of my life have been painful. I went golfing on Friday and I didn't wear a hat. It was overcast in my defense and I thought, the clouds will protect me. They did not. Uh, so I've been riding out a uh, pretty wicked sunburn on the top of my head, which for the first couple of days was all right. It just hurt when I showered. And then yesterday morning, I'm brushing my son's teeth and he looks up at me and he says, what's wrong with your head? It's like, it's just been peeling for like 48 hours, the burn. And um, you know, I, I was thinking just, what God has been doing here over the last few days. I, I think God is giving us like a God sunburn. Um, you know, it's interesting, right? Um, as we go through life, and I'm going to try to parallel this as best as I can. It's almost like at times we, we throw on our, <laughs> our hat because we don't want the God sunburn. Uh, we want to know that the sun is there. We want, to, we want to worship the sun, but we don't want it to actually change us and affect us. And so we throw on our hats and we put on our sunscreen. And we do all this stuff. And, and, and I just think what's actually been happening here um, over the past few days is it's like we, we took the ball caps off and we stopped putting on the proverbial sunscreen. <laughs> And we're just allowing the heat of God to press in around us. And, 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 and what happens, and this is like, let me educate you on a sunburn. Because in case you don't know, the more time you spend in the sun, the more it actually affects you. And, and I just had this word that I just wanted to share because tonight, uh, it's going to be our last Holy Spirit night. Pastor Mark, he's driving out in the morning. Uh, and we're going to continue on as a church, and we got whole plans and different stuff moving forward. But I, I just want to encourage you, um, Holy Spirit nights don't have to stop tonight. Every day that we live can be a day where we can bask in the Son of God, <laughs> or we can try to hide and conceal and cover up. And I just feel like God is calling us as a church just to take the ball caps off and to actually just spend time. And the more time we spend in the presence of God, he actually changes us. Like there's this wild story and Moses goes up on the mountain. He spends time in the presence. He literally came down and his face was glowing. Like that hasn't happened to me. I mean, it's a pretty cool thing. But like, God has the ability not, I guess what I'm saying, he has the ability not just to lift us in this moment, he has the ability to actually change us for life. To give us a burn that is so strong that it never goes away. And that's my prayer over us as a church, that this wouldn't just be some mountaintop thing that we experienced here for a couple days, but that we would learn what it is to walk in the sun. That we would learn what it is to spend time daily in the presence of the Holy Spirit. And I think, Mark, that's what you've been leading us in for the last few days, the very practical stuff. And so my prayer over us right now is God burn us in all the right ways. God burn us and God forgive us for putting on sunscreen <laughs> because we were afraid of getting too close. God burn. That's what I'm after. That's what I need in my life. Anybody with me? Anybody with me? 
So Lord, right now, Lord, we just dedicate this time to you. Lord, we have already been experiencing you, your power, your presence. But Lord, we pray one last time, God, over Pastor Mark as he comes to speak and to share with us, as we talk about just the practical ways of living out the Spirit. Oh God, work through him. Speak to us. In Jesus, may you be glorified in what's about to happen here. We give you all the praise. Burn us tonight, we pray. We ask this in your name. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. One last time, Parkwood, would we give a nice, big welcome to Pastor Mark? (laughs) I just want to give a shout out as well to the worship team, uh, Brian and Rachel, just the whole absolutely amazing team who have led us into his presence. Bless you guys for that. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, give it up. Also want to say a quick thanks to Pastor Danny for having me in and the whole staff. Thanks, guys, for having me and just, uh, yeah. And just a special shout out to Jane Sharon, because I've known her forever, and yeah. just, just all the little details she's done to make my life so much easier to come and, and visit you guys for a few days. Um, yeah, so I'm Mark Griffin. I'm from Canada. And if you want to look me up on my website, there it is, markgriffin.ca. And I'm here these few days. I'm working with a missions agency. Uh, This is my full-time gig, is doing mission stuff. And uh, I work with Global Recordings Network. We make audio recordings of good news stories, simple little stories like Jesus and the woman at the well or Jesus and Nicodemus that we looked at Sunday morning, stories like Jesus the Good Shepherd, Jesus the Door, the Gate, Simple stories that people can listen to. We translate languages and then share these very simple stories. Why? Because two billion people on the planet still struggle with literacy issues. So for their sake, we take them the leading edge of the spear. Even before they have all the scriptures, we share very simple Bible truth so that people can find their way to Jesus. Those are accompanied with very simple comic books without words, so they hear the story, they see the pictures of Jesus and the Bible stories, and we've seen thousands and thousands of people come to know Christ. Also, all 6,500 languages are available on the Five Fish app. You can visit the number five, the word fish, dot M-O-B-I, Moby, M-O-B-I, five, the number, fish, dot, Moby. And you can get the app tonight for free, (laughs) for free, for free. So just want to encourage you to do that. If you want to pop by our table uh, on the way out, uh, we're pretty much out of material, but that was the whole goal was to just for people to take it. Uh, There's still uh, donation slips if you'd like to make a donation or support us monthly. If God speaks to you that way, bless you. Thank you. Are you ready for something truly special? Coming up here on the screen is my bride. I, I know what you're saying. How does a guy like you get a fabulous, righteous babe? Can I tell you, what Malachi says, if you honor the Lord with tithes and offerings, that he would open the windows of heaven on you and he would bless you so much, you wouldn't even be able to contain it all. So not only do I tithe, 
but I obviously give offerings. How many of you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Not a word of a lie, I have a Facebook club called the How'd He Get Her Club. <laughs> I'm the founder and charter member, and you know what, I'm looking out here tonight. We've got a lot of candidates for membership in this crowd. <laughs> I'm not saying you're ugly. I didn't say that. But I'm saying a lot of you people in this room married up. God bless you. So my wife can't be here, but she sends her love and greetings, especially those that remember her from back in the day. And I'm just blessed and highly favored. Thank you, Jesus. Tonight, here's where we're going to go. We're going to workshop the hearing God stuff. We're going to move from hearing God into spiritual gifts. That's where we're going tonight. Because part of the working of the Holy Spirit is he loves to good give, sorry, he loves to give good gifts to those who ask. And before we leave here tonight, we're just going to ask God to loose heaven on you. Not just for you, but through you. And that'll make more sense by the end of the night. Just a quick recap. Last night we looked at how do you hear God's voice? Many great answers. We hear God's voice through the Bible, dreams, visions, thoughts, impressions, words, phrases, sentences, actual voices, through other people, through the sense or imaginations, the seamer. We can feel the emotions of God. But mostly all these things are for outside the church. Not just for inside, that's good too, but ultimately it's to transform our planet. I also showed you this slide. <clears throat> church is like Christmas every Sunday. That we're not coming to church as consumers because it is truly more blessed to give than to receive. So moving out of a consumer posture we want to be people who give spiritual gifts to bring life and encouragement and strength to those around us. I just want to be clear, because if you didn't pick this up last night, but spiritual gifts does not equal a chance at the microphone. When we talk about spiritual gifts, we're talking right in the context of your home. We're talking out in the hallways of the church and in the parking lot with your friends that you know, that you, you come prayed up and ready to bring a word of life, a word of encouragement. You're not even waiting until the last minute. Even during the week, you're like, Lord, is there something I can encourage somebody with? Somebody I'm going to see on Sunday. Somebody maybe I could give a phone call. Somebody I could send a text message to. I'm coming to the meeting tonight. And as I get on the elevator, I think the uh, elevator had come from one of the lower floors because I was on the top floor, and when the door opened, there's a lady with her cleaning cart, obviously staff at the hotel, and I said, you're going down, which when you're on the top floor, I'm not going to lie, that's a really dumb question. <laughs> they say there are no dumb questions. <laughs> I got a million of them. <laughs> Anyways, um, I get on the elevator, and I said, how was your day? Like, I read the room a bit, and she looked friendly and smiley, and plus, you know, she gets paid to interact with the client. So I said, how was your day? She said, oh, good, a little tired. How about you? I said, same, I'm a touch tired, but I'm doing okay. I said, what time do you work till? She said, oh, 10.30. I said, oh, good for you. Hang in. You're, you're going to make it. We're both going to make it. And she responded, yes, we are. You got this. <laughs> my Lord and my God, the, the cleaning staff are prophesying over me. <laughs> but can I tell you, just, just those, those little words, you got this, and a big smile on her face, how many of you know that brings life to you? I mean, that is the very nature of spiritual gifts. I mean, we can do it just in the natural, 
But how much more then when the Holy Spirit inspires and gives us ideas and thoughts and beautiful ways to say things and just, I thought, man, if I can get encouraged by the cleaning staff on the elevator, how much more is a spirit of life going to bust out of this place tonight? Amen. Amen. Thank you, all 11 of you in agreement. That was powerful. Powerful. I received that from the 11 in Jesus' name. Yeah. So again, last night we talked about hearing God foundational for spiritual growth and maturity, but also essential. Hearing God, remember it all hinges on hearing. Our ability to hear God and sense his direction, feel his direction, that is the most foundational and essential gift to flow in the power of the Spirit. Tonight, we're going to go beyond. This is all just recap so far, but we're going to go from moving from hearing God actually to sharing gifts. We're going to activate just, again, for you last night, if that was maybe, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like just an embryonic expression of hearing from God. If that's maybe something you've never done before, or it was a good refresher. It doesn't matter where you're at on the spectrum. The whole point of hearing God is that we grow in our relationship with him and that we can share life and hope and that wind of heaven, the breath of God, not just to us, but through us. Whew, I'm excited about tonight. You guys okay? I'm... I'm going to shoot to power through this by about 8.30, 8.35 so that we can actually spend some time praying, activating, and releasing this in workshop format. Are you ready? Amen. Jesus, we just ask that you would slow down the clock tonight as we release your word. Let me start with this. Hearing his voice and the gifts, to be fully functional, they need to be under covering. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17 says, Obey your leaders, submit to their authority. They keep watch over you as men who must give an account. Obey them so their work will be a joy, not a burden. That would be of no advantage to you. I've seen this phenomenon in churches where people start hearing from God and ironically and tragically they start to think they know better than the pastors. Hmm. Again, the scripture says, and this is both in a civic sense, in a governmental sense, I believe this also applies to police officers, but yes, there's also a very clear spiritual connotation to it when it says obey your leaders and submit to their authority. This is the divine order of God. Now, if you were going to a church where your pastor was a control freak, where the pastoral staff were all wanting you to drink Kool-Aid mixed with various chemicals, I would say that's not legitimate authority. And the only reason it's not legitimate authority is because it's in blatant contravention to the Scripture. What's our primary rule, our primary authority in life and godliness and doctrine? It's the Word of the Lord. It's the Scripture. If someone comes on the scene and they elevate their revelation, the stuff that God is showing them above Scripture, we have a word for that, heresy. Straight up. That is false teaching. We don't receive it. We don't believe it. We don't accept it. Unless our pastors and leaders are blatantly asking us to go against the Word of God, and I'm not talking on matters of opinion. I'm talking like, no, 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 it's okay to kill people. Wait, I don't think that lines up with the Bible. Right? 
if it's a blatant contravention of Scripture, not an opinion, not your specific little pet doctrine. I'm talking on the major issues of life. Otherwise, you obey. Because again, we're not talking about people that are starting a cult. We're talking this is a beautiful, middle-of-the-road, evangelical church with a good touch of God's presence and spirit on it. Your leaders here are not going to be messing with you. And the scripture makes it clear, obey them, submit to them. Make their lives a joy and not a burden. So I say all that to say, if you're starting to hear from God and you think you know better than Pastor Danny or uh, any of the pastors on staff, you're putting your revelation above what the scripture tells you to do. If you think you're smarter, you think you've heard from God better than the man of God, the women of God that are on staff here, when the scripture clearly says obey and submit, again, that's heretical. That's dangerous. That's anathema. Maranatha. So in Jesus' name, no pressure. We just want to start with a posture of obedience and hearts that are submitted, that honor the men and women of God that he's called to lead this house. Maybe even men and women of God that lead your small group or whatever ministry you're involved in. And God has put them there for a reason and you should honor them. That's just the word of the Lord. Are you guys okay? I know that was a little heavy, but it's the word of the Lord. And we're not messing with the word of the Lord because... I hate it when you're ministering and right in the service, the ground opens up and swallows people. I hate it when that happens. So I just want to encourage you to walk in obedience. So why do we want to share spiritual gifts? And it, I don't have time to go into them. If I'm doing like a full-on school of the spirit with like five seminars on Saturday and a whole bunch of extended teaching times, there's a lot of scripture, like hundreds of scriptures that we go through in those kind of contexts. But suffice to say, the gifts of the Spirit are listed in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 8 to 10. We're specifically talking about what we call the power manifestations of the Spirit. Nine gifts listed there. We're not talking about the Romans gifts, which are motivational in nature. We're not talking about the Ephesians four gifts, the fivefold, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. We're talking about the nine gifts of the Spirit. <clears throat> Why are they given? For encouragement, strength, and edification. Let me just declare these scriptures. 1 Corinthians 14, 3 says they're for encouragement and comfort. Verse 4 say, says they edify the church. Verse 5, so the church may be edified or built up. Verse 26, speaking of the gift, says, <clears throat> all of these must be done for the strengthening of the church. And Paul said to the church in Rome that he wanted to bring a spiritual gift to make them strong, all the people in Rome. That is, that they would be mutually encouraged. It's a fairly clear theme in Scripture that this is why the, the gifts aren't given for your personal advantage. They're not given for selfish reasons. Uh, they're not given so you can have really good tricks to do at parties, even Christian parties, not even for that. The purpose is for edification, encouragement, and strength. We're doing really well, it's only 8.06. We only have three points, and I'm almost already through the first one. So again, with encouragement, strength, and edification, those that are hurting, those that are broken, they come to the house of God, they get into fellowship in small groups, they hang out with Christians, and there's a wholeness that comes. Have you ever seen these cardboard testimonies? My God, this is the power of the gospel, but many times you see demonstrated the power of spiritual gifts as people talk about healing and the mentoring and the words of life that they receive, that they come in feeling bad and they go out feeling good. That's the very essence of what happens when we encounter the Holy Spirit 
and then share him with others. Are you ready for this? Yeah, we're on number two. That just happened. Secondly, I want to talk briefly about the posture. Galatians says, the only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. Again, if it's not birthed in faith, it's of the flesh. But when you mingle in love, and the word for love here is, of course, divine love. The Greek language differentiated between the love of friendship, the love between brothers, intimate uh, love between a man and a woman. But the highest form of love was agape love, sacrificial, never selfish. And again, isn't that what Paul talks about when he describes the spiritual gifts in 1 Corinthians chapter 13? That's why the love chapter is in there. Not only is there faith, but there's humility. That's the second part of the posture. So we want to be people with an attitude or a posture of faith, but also humility. I just want to be very clear on this, that spiritual gifts are not, yes, thank you, Lord, I receive, 11, 12, 24, 30, 32, yes, thank you, Father, and 43, yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for those words of knowledge. It's not about me. It's not to benefit me. The whole point of the spiritual gifts are so that we can sacrificially, lovingly, with great humility. And I'll tell you, that's the qualifier here in 1 Corinthians 13, 12. Now I know in part. Hmm. I love these words. We, it's, you know, we look in a mirror, but it's not the greatest reflection. Like God's showing us stuff, we see stuff, but you don't fully know. We only know in part. Having the voice of the Spirit, having God be able to speak to us, again, it's not so you can win the lottery. I've known a lot of Pentecostals. I've never known one to win the lottery. Not more than like 100 bucks. Like I'm talking like a full windfall. You know, the $65 million jackpot. There's no word of knowledge for that because it's not about me. Does that make sense to you? The third posture for your consideration tonight is love. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. 14. Sorry, that's supposed to be 13. And verse 3, 1 to 3. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, if I have the gift of prophecy, if I can fathom all mysteries and knowledge. And then look at this just radical expression. You know what? Even if I give all I possess to the poor, even if I surrender my body to the flames, but I don't have love, I'm nothing. (laughs) And those words, I mean, they're not just beautifully poetic. He's contrasting spiritual gifts with love or without He's contrasting these beautiful spiritual acts of sacrifice, saying it's worthless. Again, later in the chapter, he says it's like a banging gong or a resounding cymbal, like just noise. Hmm. And I mentioned this last night, but I just want you to see the graphic real quick in 1 Corinthians 12. If you want to know more about the spiritual gifts, These are the best three chapters in the Bible to read, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, 14. And as I said yesterday, and Danny just had this revelation on the weekend too, that, or last week sometime. I'm sorry, Danny, I don't know accurately exactly when it was. I'm not trying to misquote you, malign you in any way. I just, I don't honestly know. Anyways, Danny, Pastor Danny came to realize as well, chapter 12 is about spiritual gifts. Chapter 14 is about spiritual gifts. And in the middle is the love chapter. And I want you to read it soon. Like, I don't want to give you heavy homework. Because some of you, I know after this, you're going to be out partying, carrying on, probably going to a rave somewhere. And when you get home at 3 a.m., you're not going to feel like reading the Scripture. But in the near future, when you do read the Scripture... 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14. Check out how biased 
chapter 13 is about the spiritual gifts. We call it the love chapter, but it's the filling of a spiritual gifts sandwich. And as I mentioned yesterday, if, if you have the top bread and the bottom bread, but you don't have the meat, that's not a sandwich. It's stuffing, raw stuffing. I've never seen a recipe for raw stuffing. Yeah, anyways, tough crowd, Pastor Danny, tough crowd. I was hoping to get some kind of reaction from that, but you no, know, just terrible. Thirdly, as we move from hearing God's voice to sharing his heart, I want you to see the passion. In Romans 1, verse 11, he's, it's Paul's words to the church in Rome, and again, I mentioned this last night. He said, I long to see you so I can impart a spiritual gift to you to make you strong. Like the, his longing isn't, oh, I just really, really miss you. You're so cute. I just want a hug. No, his longing is to give, right? He's passionate about them being made strong, encouraged by each other's faith. And I love how he presumes on God's Holy Spirit. He can trust God. He, like, I'm going to show up. I'm going to do my part. And I know God's going to show up because he loves to go give good gifts. I don't think he's being presumptuous at all. I think he just has a clear understanding. When you lean into the Lord and say, this guy over here is kind of discouraged. Lord, would you help me bring courage? This person over here seems hopeless. Lord, would you give me something to bring them hope? And again, maybe get a verse, maybe get a nice comment to say, or maybe you get something life-changing. You never know. You have not because you ask not God. So I love Paul's passion. I can't wait to get with you. I just want to encourage you. I want to make you strong. I want to impart a spiritual gift to you. Isn't that powerful? I mean, that is serious, God-believing passion that God is going to show up and make people strong. Because you know what? That's God's character. That's actually who he is. He is the God who rescues and saves Mm. Come on, I'm preaching better than you're shouting tonight. Let's be honest. Come on. Yeah. Anyways, I want to touch on these verses again that I touched on last night. At the end of chapter 12, he said, eagerly desire the greater gifts. And then, as I mentioned, there's the love chapter in 1 Corinthians 13. And then the very next verse, 1 Corinthians 14, 1, follow the way of love and eagerly desire. I don't know if you noticed, but when the 1 Corinthians 13 came in, it was, they flamed in. Flamed in. Because the word for eagerly desire, uh, zelotes, is actually, uh, zealous is actually a word of burning, flame. Uh, the word for follow there in 14.1 is taken from Warner Brothers cartoons, meaning follow. The word is dioko, meaning, again, because we didn't have English 2,000 years ago, the earliest manuscripts we have are in the Greek language, and the Greek word dioko has a strong hunting implication. It's not just Follow the way of love. It's not some casual thing. It's actually be very intentional and track the way of love. That's a challenge to take the spirit of Elmer Fudd into your workplace. What are you doing today? We're hunting wabbits. <laughs> that hunting, and you see him like Elmer Fudd, he's, he's a champion tracker. He knows how to tiptoe. He knows how to look for the signs, how to, how to sniff it out. And he always finds bugs. Bunny. 
in case you were thinking insects. Hmm. Follow the way of love. Hunt it down. Totally changes how you look at work tomorrow morning. What do you got going on at work tomorrow? Well, I got some appointments. I got some, I got a stack of work I got to do. Got a bunch of emails. Got a bunch of product I got to put out. My piecework, man. Like I, huh, I'm barely keeping up. As opposed to, I'm going hunting tomorrow. <laughs> what are you hunting for? Love. You might not want to say this out loud because it's really creepy sounding. <laughs> what do you mean you're hunting for love? Well, there's this guy I'm working with. He has been miserable. But I've been working at figuring out how I can really help this guy. Like, I really like him. I really believe in him. But he's really been struggling. So I, I, I managed to, well, he was away from his phone and I, I got his wife's phone number, and I texted his wife, and I said, hey, I work with your husband. I, I snuck in. I got his phone number. Forgive me. I, might be a criminal activity, but anyways, <laughs> what's his favorite food? Like something I could take to work. Well, she said he loves pastrami on rye, and there's this deli near their house. Well, I went and got the pastrami. I went and got his favorite bread. And I made him not just one, but I made him two huge sandwiches. I bought a pound of pastrami. There's like half a pound on each sandwich. I mean, it's the nicest. And I also found out what mustard he likes. So anyways, tomorrow at work, I'm going to surprise him. And his wife made him uh, just to kind of tick him off and get the things set up. She made him his most hated sandwich. She made him a peanut butter sandwich. He's deathly allergic. So <laughs> as soon as he bites into it, he's going to swell up. And as he's about to die, I got an EpiPen. I'm going to stab him in the leg, get the Epi going. And then when he calms down and he starts breathing again, like I'm, I'm ready with the CPR if we need to go there. I'm going to surprise him with a pastrami sandwich. Two of them. And I got his favorite chips, and again, favorite mustard on there, a little bit of sauerkraut on one, because some days he feels like it, some days he doesn't. So I got one with the sauerkraut, one without. And I'm just, I'm just so excited to be able to do this for this guy. You know what that is right there? That's hunting love. Love isn't taking the thing I want and giving it to him. Love is finding out his love language or her love language, and speak in that language. If they're into gifts, get them a little gift. Again, speak their language. If, they, if their love language is affirmation, then affirm them. Like, find out how to best love people. And when everybody at work is giving them grief, and you're giving them love, Jesus is honored. Follow the way of love. Hunt it down. This is going to take some work. Going to take some creativity. Listen, you got neighbors that have been hard to talk to, hard to reach, not interested in you. You got loved ones. You got family members that don't want to give you the time of day since you committed your life to Jesus. Find out how you can touch their hearts and love them to death. I mean that in the spiritual sense, not literally, because again, you could go to jail um, for murdering people. Just want to be clear on that. That's not what we're teaching from Parkwood Pulpit. Follow the way of love. Hunt it down. And then have this eager desire, this burning passion. This is a little taste. This zeal within you. And eagerly desire what? Gifts of the Spirit, especially prophecy. Paul's whole point in going with prophecy is prophecy actually helps people. Declaring what God feels, what God wants, what God knows over somebody's life, as opposed to just walking up to them and saying, oh, I'm going to use my gift of tongues. Hey, should have bought a Honda. 
Might have bought a Hyundai, could have bought a Nova, could have bought a Kia. <laughs> Thank you for that Kia. Who spoke that out? Who said that? I see that hand. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. And again, I, I just want to refer to this again. Would God ask you to hunt for something he doesn't want to give you? Seriously. Is God some ogre in heaven going, go ahead, ask me for a spiritual gift? Go ahead, ask me for a word of knowledge. I think that might help your desire to share the gospel in the workplace. Go ahead, ask me for a word of knowledge. <laughs> I'm not giving it to you. <laughs> like, seriously. Do you think that's how God is going to respond? Come on. How many of you know he's actually a good, good father? That's been some good declaration we've been singing in recent years. You're a good, good father. That's who you are. That's who he is. You ask and you shall receive. Again, you ask your dad for a fish, he's not going to give you a scorpion. You ask him for an egg, he's not going to give you a rock. Man, you ask God. He loves to give the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And don't be fearful because, again, God wouldn't ask you to hunt for something or eagerly desire something that he wouldn't want to give you. So just to recap this real quick as we're wrapping up, moving from hearing to sharing, the purpose is encouragement, strength, and edification. The posture is faith, humility, and love. And the passion is longing to impart spiritual gifts and to eagerly desire them. Tonight's message has been brought to you by the letter P. And by the number three. So last night we workshopped it a bit by saying, Father, we think about me. And I was able to talk with some people on the way out, like, yeah, God just spoke so beautifully to me. God, God told me I was his boy. God told me I was special. I, oh, the stories were beautiful as we asked God a question like that. And can I just say, it's just a great exercise to carry on in your devotions. Good to take a pen and paper in in case he says something really cool. It could change your life. I remember one time I did this exercise, Father, what do you think about me? And he hit me right between the eyes, and I was sobbing like someone who frequently sobs at loud volumes. That's how bad I was sobbing. Like it, and God healed something. I just asked a simple question, and I ended up like just laid out and crying and, you know, puddle of tears and other bodily fluids just left on the pillow because I dared ask God how he felt about me. Students, listen to me. Ask that question frequently of the Lord and live out of that. It'll keep you, it'll guard you from dysfunction, from pain, from all kinds of negative things happening in your life. If you can get a good understanding of how God feels about you and live out of that identity, nothing can touch you in Jesus' name. Amen. So that was part one. Tonight we're going to go into this in just a few moments. Not just asking the Lord what he thinks about us, Again, you can do that in your devotions anytime, and I encourage you to make it an ongoing lifestyle to have an intimate relationship with your Heavenly Father where you say, Dad, what do you think of me? How do you feel about me? And allow him to correct all the negative stuff you're hearing in the media, things you're reading, things you're seeing, things you're hearing, all the garbage that's coming in, and actually just listen to him Line it up with the word and receive it in Jesus' name. But tonight we're going to deflect a bit. And instead we're going to say, Father, what do you think about... You don't actually have to make an elephant noise there. It's not what I'm suggesting. You guys okay? It's okay. It's the house of the Lord. You can laugh. You don't have to stifle it. But put somebody's name in the blank. That's, the, that's where I'm going with this. Father, what do you think about my spouse? Father, what do you think about my kids? A 
sitting here in church? Great question to ask. Look around. Maybe there's somebody that you care about here, a friend, family member. Great question to ask. Lord, what do you, what do you think about? What do you fe- not just think, but what do you feel about this person? And when the Lord starts to put things in your heart, don't be afraid to go the next level with questions. Hmm. Why do you feel that? How, talk about that, Lord. Why? Tell me more about what you feel and dig into it a bit. And then the best question to ask is, Father, what, what are we going to do about it? Where we can actually step into a supernatural realm. I mean, if we just do natural things and go give them a hug or say, hey, I think you're special, that's, that's a great start. And if you do nothing else tonight, at least do that. Speak life into somebody. But I'm going to encourage you to step into a supernatural place. Let me show you this slide again with just some different content. Rather than overthinking it or trying to figure it all out, just simply steward the gifts well. Here's here's a few questions you can ask. What do I currently know about that person? But what are you saying, Father? Holy Spirit, what are you saying? Lord Jesus, what are you saying? And is this thing you're showing me, is this for now or is it for later? Should, should I share it with them or should I just make this a matter of prayer and give them a good plan to protect brotherly side hug? When should I share it? Where should I share it? How could I humbly offer these thoughts you're putting in my heart, these gifts, these words of knowledge, words of wisdom. I'm going to come back to the bottom line in just a second. I felt tonight our time is just about done, but I'm going to go off the board for $500. And I feel I just need to differentiate very clearly for you the difference between the gifts of healing and gifts of miraculous powers listed in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 8, 9, and 10. They talk about the gifts of healing. How many of you know there's more than one way for somebody to get healed? Remember uh, Naaman had leprosy, calls on the prophet, and he almost misses his miracle because the prophet said, hey, you want to get rid of your leprosy? Go dunk in the Jordan River seven times. And Naaman went off, ticked off, and he said to his servant, Oh, can you believe that? He asked me to dunk in the Jordan River. I never noticed that before. Dunk Jordan. That's so cool. (laughs) I only picked that up when I read it the 23rd time. Did you ever see that before? Dunk in the Jordan. Like, that's powerful teaching right there. Wow, thank you, Holy Spirit. I receive it. Um, sorry, little, this ADHD moment has been brought to you by markgriffin.ca. <clears throat> and he says to his servant, why would I dunk in the Jordan River, are not the Abana and the Farpar, the rivers of Damascus, way cleaner than the muddy Jordan River? And the servant wisely says, dude, if he'd asked you to do something heroic, Mr. Military Hero, you would have done it. All he's asking you to do is go dunk in the river. Get over yourself. Come on, seven dips. Give it a try. So Naaman humbles himself Seven dunks in the river, and he comes up. The Bible says his his skin is like a baby's skin, totally new and fresh. But there's another little phrase he said. When he's going off in his rant, he said, I thought for sure the man of God would come out, wave his hands over the spots, and I would be clean. Right? And a lot of times we got it all figured out. But it's a great question to ask, Lord, how do you want to heal this person? 
Because I noticed a lot of Christians get discouraged because they don't know the difference between a miracle and a healing. A miracle is an instantly regenerated, it's a happening and it's spontaneous and it's sudden. It's miraculous and it happens in a moment. Healing. Healing, however, takes time. Some of you know you've been on a prescription or you've had a cream or an ointment or you've been to physio. and it, Some stuff takes a couple days. Some stuff takes a couple weeks. But you don't come back from shoppers with your pills, your antibiotics, and take the first one and go, nothing's happening. Garbage. That's going in the garbage. Stupid doctor. No. Like, we have brains. We like, okay, that's the first one. I know it's going to take at least 40 hour, 48 hours before I probably see any difference. And then it's going to start improving from there. But with prayer, Father, in Jesus' name, We declare your healing now. I'm done. God bless you. Yeah, nothing happened. You probably got weak faith. Like, remember Jesus taught the parable of the um, persistent widow? She keeps coming to the judge, and finally the judge says, fine, fine. There you go. And he listens because she persists. And Jesus said, that, man, when we pray, that's how we should do it. We should pray and not give up. I'm not talking vain repetitions. Oh, Father, oh, Father, oh, Father, oh, Father, oh, Father, oh, Father. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Like, I imagine God's in heaven going, mm -hmm, I heard you the first time. Come on, let's go. let's go. Not that God is impatient, but again, the vain repetitions are not the plan either. But this persistence of saying, Father, in Jesus' name, would you heal this person? And it's cool. Like, you don't have to pray for an hour to see somebody healed. You pray, and then you ask, how you doing? You notice any improvement? Uh, I, gave, I gave a similar teaching to this. I did a Holy Spirit weekend in Ingersoll uh, a couple months ago. And... In the final service, we were workshopping it. And I said, let's just, just pray. Holy Spirit, show us who, who do you want to touch? Who do you want to, anybody you want to heal? Anything? And a lady from over here, she raises her hand, and I come over, as we'll maybe try very soon. And I said, what are you feeling? She said, yeah, I just feel that lady over there in the front row. I just feel... I need to pray for her for healing. Okay, come on, let's, let's give it a whirl. So she comes over, we pray for this lady, sitting right here, second row, right on the end. And as we get up to her, I'm like, oh, some hearing aids. I said, is there anything specific you want to pray for? She says, yeah, I want to pray for her hearing. I said, good call. How many of you know when you see a hearing aid or a cane or a crutch, any kind of prosthetic device, a wheelchair, those are actually green lights to pray, not red lights. And she saw the hearing aids, and she said, let's just pray. She prays a prayer, and as we're praying, I'm just kind of watching. I'm not praying. I'm just coaching. And I says, good, it's good what you're doing. What you're, let's, let's just pause for a minute. Uh, Ma'am, do you feel anything? She said, I feel like I got a rod going through my head, like from ear to ear. I said, does it hurt? She goes, no, it feels like fire. It feels like I can feel it in both ears and right, it's going right through my head, this rod of fire. I said, heat is good. Notice any difference in your hearing? She's like, nope. I said, something's happening here. Go for it, pray again. The lady prays again and, you know, she turns the volume up a bit because we're getting a little excited. God's doing something. This is an Ingersoll. Not like some Holy Ghost evangelist crusade and you know, some big 30,000 seat auditorium somewhere. Just, we're talking Ingersoll. 
And so we pray again. I said, how are you feeling now? She goes, oh, it's getting hotter. It's just, wow. I said, is it uncomfortable? No, but it, like something's, I feel like there's a tingling going on and heat. And, and, I, and I said, okay, let's get the whole church. Come on, let's all just press in. So we pray a third time. And then I asked her, do you notice any difference in your hearing? She's like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, can I ever hear you now? Wow. I said, put a number on it. Is it like 5% better, 10% better? I like to lowball it just to instill fear and doubt. I was being facetious, Pastor Danny. But just to be on the safe side, what, 5%, 10%? She goes, no. Like, I'm talking 50% better. I can't believe how well I can hear right now. So we spent a little more time praying, and then we seemed to kind of just, it just kind of leveled off there right at 50%. I said, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're just going to pray covering on you. And how many of you are going to commit to praying for this lady every day this coming week? And a whole bunch of hands went up, people writing it down. I said, just set a reminder on your phone. Would you do that? Just set an alarm, pray for whatever her name was, um, Mephibosheth, I think. Just every day. Put that on your phone so you remember to pray for her. And so they did. The next Sunday, I did part one and two the first Sunday, part three and four the second Sunday. Next Sunday, I'm back. And on the Sunday night, she's there. And I notice something as soon as I see her. She's not wearing hearing aids. <laughs> I said, how'd your week go? She said, good. Uh, Monday, I was probably up to 60%. By Wednesday, I was up to about 70 75%. Thursday, Friday, into the 80s. And, and by Friday, I was like 90% 90, 90 hearing everything. So Wednesday, I actually took my hearing aids out, haven't used them since. And I'm telling you, I can hear like 90% right now without my hearing aids. You know, I say all that to say this, that's a healing. That's a healing. And when you pray for somebody, cover them with prayer, saturate them with prayer. Sometimes you might even have to do like some prayer and fasting. That's where you don't eat and you pray instead. It's not hunger striking against God. It's just an act of faith. God, you're more important to me than even sustenance, even food. You skip meals and you press in and you pray. And I'll tell you, there's some kinds of breakthroughs you won't see except for fasting. I want to encourage you to pray for people. Ask for a miracle, sure. But if you don't see a miracle right away, please understand, you can ask the Lord to heal it. And say, I just, I believe, I'm going to be praying all week for you. I'm going to pray that you're going to see some improvement Monday, a little more Tuesday. And, and when I see you next Sunday, I'm believing there's going to be some significant improvement. And I'm going to check up on you. That is walking in a gift of healing. That's contending for a gift of healing. I know it's a lot easier when we get the drive through variety. Yeah, I'd like a miracle and a side of fries and a medium Coke. So much more convenient just to get your drive through instantaneous miracle. Um, but if the Lord is speaking something, you differentiate. Again, I don't know why I felt that was important, but obviously it was worth another 10 minutes. In the end, if the Lord puts something in your heart to do, to pray for healing, to pray for a miracle, gives you a word of knowledge, he shows you something, or puts a thought in your head, something to pray or something to do, it's important to WWATD. What would Alex Trebek do? <laughs> Come on, that's good teaching right there. That is, whatever God gives you, you put it in the form of a question. You follow up with questions. So you don't just presume something, you just say, can I ask you something? Uh, I just feel I should pray for your marriage. Does that make sense? 
And when the person melts down in a puddle of tears and starts convulsing on the floor, you're like, it seems to witness with you. Cool. But as opposed to saying, remember yesterday, the kingdom, thus saith the Lord. I love the Alex Trebek approach. Just ask questions and then follow up. Is it, is that, does that make sense? Does that help you? Was that right at all? Did I miss it? Again, real humility. You take a step of faith, but you care about people. You follow up with them. You, you press through and say, so that verse I shared with you, does that mean anything to you? One more super quick story. I was at a meeting, and I saw some of the people that went to the front of the church, and I said, I know that guy. He's a minister. I preached for him just a few months ago in his church. Beautiful Filipino man and his wife. And I'm sitting up in the balcony. Not here, another church. There are other churches with balconies. Don't be alarmed. And I'm looking at the guy, and I'm about to get up and pray with him, and I, this thought pops into my head. Go to your car, get the envelope in your visor, and give him, give him some money. Okay? And I had a stash of money in there, and it was something like $187.50. Like it was an odd number. That's a long story. I, I won't bog you down with details. I grab the envelope, I go back into the church, and I'm at, now on the main floor, heading to the front, and I'm like, how much of it do you want me to give him, Lord? And he said, the whole thing. Give him the whole envelope. I'm like, wow. You know what? He's a pastor. He's a man of God. I'll do it. He'll probably be thinking, hmm, weird number. So I go to the front, and I'm like, Hey, guys, can I pray with you? They're like, oh, Pastor Mark, so good to see you. We hug, we, we laugh a little together. I, say, I just came, I just want to pray with you guys real quick. And they're like, yeah, great, that's awesome. Um, so I go to pray, and I, I'm just like, oh, Jesus, give me something to encourage my dear friends. And nothing, I get Nothing. And so I just start into a prayer, you know, nice general, oh, Lord, bless my friends, thank you for them, thank you for their ministry, blah, 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 blah. Nothing earth-shattering. And a verse pops into my head. Oh, and I thank you that your word says blah, 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 blah. And I just quote a scripture that popped into my head. Didn't really think much of it, just kept going. Finished the prayer, I see there's tears coming down their cheek. But they're, I mean, they're such beautifully tender people, no surprise. I, I hugged them both, and I said, hey, I just, uh, I was coming to pray, and I, I just felt I was supposed to give you this. So by then I had licked the RBC deposit envelope shut and sealed it, and I said, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure exactly how much is in here. It's a, I said, you can hear there's some coins, too. <laughs> um, but I just feel I was supposed to give you this envelope, so bless you guys, love you. And I walked away. 20 years later, I see them at a minister's conference. We go for sushi. I mean, come on, sushi. If sushi doesn't make you speak in tongues, I don't know what will. <laughs> Man, that wasabi, the white tuna sashimi, are you kidding me? That is from the Lord. And did he not say, arise, kill, and eat? I mean, come on, this is... Anyways, we're sitting over a table of sushi, just enjoying, laughing, and, and as we go to pray for the food, I said, brother, why don't, why don't you lead us in prayer? And he starts into this prayer, and it's, you know, just nice food blessing. And, and then he goes off on, and Lord, I thank you for Pastor Mark and Tammy. I thank you for... Well, that we're in the ministry today because of them. I thank you for how you've spoken through them and changed our lives because of them. God bless Pastor Mark and Pastor Tammy. May they be encouraged today for their investment. He finishes the prayer, and right away my first question is, dude, 
what are you talking about? He said, well, years ago, it was actually the night we got ordained. I said, oh, yeah, I remember I was there. I saw, I saw you go to the front, and I went and prayed with you. I remember that. It was a beautiful night. They said, yeah, before we left the house, we were arguing about money because we'd paid all our bills, but we didn't have enough to pay the hydro bill. And it was past due, and we were shouting at each other, and my wife said to me, you're a joke. How can you, how can you claim to be a man of God? You're working this job, plus you're working at the church, but there's not enough. You said God called us to this and he would provide, but there's not enough. We can't even pay the hydro bill. And the husband says, yeah, well, you know what? We're not going to solve this right now. Let's just go to the ordination service, and we'll figure this out later. She said, no, I'm not, I'm not playing here. If God doesn't pay our hydro bill today, I'm done with ministry. Their ordination service. The, the guy that preached, he just, it's like he shot an arrow and hit them right between the eyes. They were so humbled to come to the front to be ordained. This incredibly good looking gentleman gets up out of the balcony. and uh, comes to pray with them. And he's not the sharpest tool in the shed, but at least he knows to pause during his prayer and ask God if there's anything he wants him to pray. And the Lord gives him a verse, and the verse is a verse that was given to this couple years prior the night they were called into ministry. Do how many verses there are in the Bible? Like I think 40 or 50 at least. <laughs> and I happened, the one popped into my mind, and I just happened to just say that verse out loud as I prayed over them. And God reminded them I called you. And Mark is reminding you right now because I put that verse into his head. Thank God I said it. And thank God I went to the car and got the envelope. And thank God I didn't just say, I'll give him 50 bucks. I'll give him 100. I'm feeling really generous. I'll give him 150. I'll hold on to the extra 37.50 in case I need it. No, I was, I may not be the smartest guy in the world, but I was humble enough to ask, Lord, how much? And he said, give it all. Hmm. I sealed the envelope, I gave it to him. They get through the evening, their hearts are so warmed. They get home, my friend throws his suit coat on the bed, and he hears the change rattle. And he's like, oh, honey, Mark gave us that envelope, remember? Oh, yeah. He pulls it out, opens it up. And, and the number, I'm, just, I'm doing my best, but I think it was around 187.50. The hydro bill was 187. 40 something. And they're still in ministry today. They have planted four of the most cutting edge Holy Ghost Filipino churches in the Toronto area full of God, discipled. Man, they've, 
the people they're touching. We're talking drug addicts and new immigrants. Like their church is just a hodgepodge. It's not even Filipino anymore. It's just a church for the nations that loves people. And <sighs> what did I have to do with that? Very, very little. But when God popped that verse into my head, I thank God I said it. Different times during the week, I was getting money out of the bank for different things and did a withdrawal and just happened to put money in an envelope and the Lord said, give it all to them. Like it was within pennies of the exact amount. If I'd added a 20, we would have missed it. It being literally within pennies of the amount they needed, God said to them, I want you in ministry. Wow. And you know, like you've seen me for Sunday morning, Sunday night, Monday night. Nothing fancy, right? I'm just a regular guy. Just sharing my heart, just pouring my guts out to you. How many of you know in the Old Testament, God chose to spoke, chose to speak through a donkey? Hear what I'm saying? If God can use me, he can use anybody. I don't care what your background is. I don't care what your level of theology is. I don't care if you just got saved last week. If you know how to listen to things, I mean, your ears don't even have to be that good. If you can close your eyes, he can show you things. If you can just pause for a second and let him put thoughts in your head, he can change the world. He's just looking for people that are available, people that will actually, are you ready for this? Intentionally say, Holy Spirit, is there something I can help with? Would you just hold your hands out real quick like I'm about to give you a gift? Because I am. Holy Spirit, we ask for spiritual gifts. Not for us, but for our friends. People that don't yet know Jesus. For those family members. Lord, for those co-workers, the school friends, those neighbors that we've known for years, those acquaintances that we haven't seen since high school hardly, but every now and then we bump into them. Lord, for those who don't know you, Lord, would you speak to us? Who, who do you want us to set up a lunch appointment with? Lord, who should we take for coffee? Father, would you just whisper that into our hearts tonight? And Lord, would you release a spiritual gift or many gifts? We eagerly desire spiritual gifts. We eagerly desire the just that leading of your spirit, the way you put thoughts in our heads, when, we, when we'll intentionally welcome you and invite you. And Lord, even when we forget, we give you permission to interrupt us, to show us things, just to pop things into our head, like our sister said last night, to wake us up in the middle of the night. Lord, just to interrupt us while we're driving or speak through a song on the radio or show us something in print or a phrase or something that will bring our spirits to life. Lord, I call forth tonight the word of God planted in these wonderful people. And I declare that the grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of the Lord stands forever. And I call the word of God that is in these men and women of God, I call it to life in Jesus' name with a vengeance because your word isn't going to return to you empty. It's going to accomplish the purpose for which you sent it out. And I thank you, Lord, that when it comes back to us, we're going to cast our bread upon the water, and that includes the bread of life. 
And after many days, it's going to come back to us. It's going to be pressed down, shaken together, and running over. It's going to be just thrown right back into our laps. So, Lord, breathe through us by your word and by your Holy Spirit. I, I pray divine covering over every one of these saints tonight, that you would protect their minds, protect their hearts, protect the seed, protect the gifts of faith that are in them and increase them, that deep would call to deep, that a new hunger, an eagerly desiring of spiritual gifts would be stirred in our hearts, God, that we would have a heart for the lost like we've never had before, a heart to love and encourage like we've never had before. Jesus, I call the inactive active now in Jesus' name. I speak every single believer in this house within the sound of my voice or watching online in Jesus' name. At the moment that they hear us, I call them to life in Jesus' name. I call forth a newness. I call out of them hope and healing and courage and strength and encouragement that they are not bankrupt in Jesus' name. Out of their innermost being flow rivers of living water. There is now hope and encouragement being released like never before. And I declare and I decree that every one of the gifts of the Spirit are going to be demonstrated through this house, not just every now and then, but as a lifestyle and not just in the house, but on the streets, in the marketplace, in the workplace, in the schools, in the neighborhood, in the home, on the street, in Jesus' name, the fullness of God by the power of the Spirit and in Jesus' name activated on Windsor, on Lakeshore, all through Tecumseh, right out to Bell River, got out through the county, Essex, Aberg, all over this region. Yeah, even down to Kingsville. Wow, that's Holy Ghost when Kingsville gets a touch of Jesus. Thank you, Father. You're activating your presence in town, out in the county. Thank you, Father. You're doing it. We see family members coming to Jesus. Woo! By faith, we see people getting healed, co-workers and friends being restored. We call them out of their place of death and inactivity, and we call them into life tonight. Woo! My God. My God. My God. My God. My God. Look at me. You scare me. Seriously, you guys are so much more dangerous than you know. Christ in you. My God, the kingdom of God is forcefully advancing and the violent take it by force. There is a kingdom zeal and eagerness and violence rising up in the people of God tonight. Listen, this is not a time to get passive and complacent, but stir yourselves up in the Lord. Listen, I don't care if you're introverted. I don't care if you're shy. In Jesus' name, step out of who you are in the natural and step into the supernatural. We're going to do the exercise real quick. Father, who do you want us? Who do you want us to speak to? Lord, how do you feel about that person? Just take a quick minute right now. We're just going to make this a quick work tonight because we're way over time. Lord, speak to me. Who do you want to touch? Who in my world do you want to touch? And what are we going to do about it? How do you feel about them, Lord? And please understand, this isn't just a one-time thing for tonight. This is a new lifestyle. Walking in the Spirit. Those who are sons of God live by the Spirit. Thank you, Lord, that you're speaking to us. 
Thank you, Lord, that you're speaking to us. Anybody, is that happening right now? The Lord's speaking to you about a neighbor or a friend or, yeah, wow, yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. <sighs> Father, just cover over this. Thank you for activating us. Thank you for the power of your word and your spirit. Thank you, Lord, for this incredible opportunity to be in this wonderful house. I pray your blessing on Parkwood. Thank you for Pastor Danny, Natalie, all the staff, all the volunteers. I ask that you continue to abide with them, Holy Spirit. Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor Dan, I'm going to turn it to you and thanks so much. And I'll be around if people want to pray. I don't know if you want to do the ministry teeth. I'm, I'm here. Whatever you want, Pastor. Brian, um, you had uh, I Speak Jesus in, in the holster. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's stand on up to our feet. If we could, um, if there are any pastors in the house, maybe some of our elders, um, you just come on down uh, to the front. Um, they're going to lead us in a song. Uh, I, uh, I'm fully aware of the time. Uh, if you need to go, uh, be blessed. Uh, really, be blessed. Uh, but here's what we're gonna do. The, the team's gonna gonna sing. It, it is gonna. I mean, I, I've learned this about Brian. When he's leading worship, he has one gear, and that is. Whew, it is. It is go time. <laughs> But uh, as as we're just singing, I, I just thought, hey, let's just let's just take a moment as a church. Let's just let's just worship Jesus. Let's worship Jesus. Uh, there is going to be some of us down here at the front. Uh, if you want to come down for prayer, we would we would just love to stand and pray with you. If if you need a touch of God, um, as, as we said, we'll pray for a miracle. And if that doesn't happen, we're going to pray for healing. <laughs> we're gonna we're just going to believe tonight. Uh, that God is going to move. I don't, I don't know what you're facing, uh, but I know that God is here. He's so much better than me or Mark or any of our pastors. <laughs> God is here, and he wants to move. And so uh, you've already made your way out on a Tuesday night. Again, if you need to go, be blessed. If not, we're just going to take some time. We're going to pray together. We're going to worship Jesus a little bit, and uh, we're just going to believe God to move. So if you need to go, be blessed. If you're going to stay, let's worship, and uh, let's let the Holy Spirit does what he does best, and that is change lives. So pastors, elders, you want to come forward. Again, if you need anything, come on down. Uh, we would love to pray for you. just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Your name is power Your name is healing Your name Shadows burn like a fire. 
Jesus Shout Jesus from the mountains And Jesus in the streets yeah. Jesus in the darkness Over every enemy Jesus for my family I speak the holy name Jesus Come on, declare the king tonight Say, shout Jesus from Everything in the name of 
Place. And not for a minute was I for 
Healing is here. 
It's here to me. 